Welcome back. So before we take a look at that, let's take a look at this. So you remember last time I had put that uh, V channel there on the bottom surface of the wing ahead of the wheel well, and I had the camera mounted down uh, on you know by the tire down on the uh, on the wheel door bracket there. So you didn't really have a good angle on what was happening there with the flow, but as you can see there, that uh, V channel the, or the L channel there basically is creating more turbulence behind it. I think it's just rotors are sort of rolling off of it. So that's not really going to be the solution. Potentially I need some VGs there or something like that to smooth out the air and it may not even be possible. Uh, but in order to remove this as a variable from the next proper test, and which will be ground effect testing, I'm just going to cover the wheel wells for now. I've got some two foot by two foot aluminum sheets that I'm just going to tape into place with some heavy duty tape. And uh, just to have a look at this, there's not really much to see here. I just put a couple of um, bits of you know nylon there um, on the surface there of the foreplane. And you see there's a couple on the leading edge there of the wing. But there's really nothing to be learned at this point, I don't think, um, here because there's no real um, lift being generated or anything. All right, so next up I wanted to verify the power I was getting and actually see if I could increase it a little bit more. So um, I don't really have any video, but I've got the nose wheel sitting on that scale again with the remote display sitting there and the, that's reading out there on the top left corner of that display. And what I did was I took the engine up to uh, full power and then I tried it through different settings for the governor. So basically taking it back to a fatter prop setting. So, you know, from 3720 RPM on the engine down to about 3000 and just uh, measured there to see where the best power was and it actually turns out as it, as you would expect there I guess it's right up where the RPM is the highest so that's where I need to keep it there um, and then the next thing I wanted to do was do some work on tuning it there to see um, if it, changing the uh, timing advancing the timing on the injection would help a little bit and actually it did um, make a difference I don't have full video showing everything there but I've managed to eke some more performance out of the uh, engine as you'll see uh, coming up and as I'm tuning it I'm trying to keep the temperatures down um, but you know adding a little bit more fuel and uh, advancing the timing and that to sort of compensate for that I end up with the temperatures being slightly higher so I still need to look at this some more so this is a rundown runway 3.5 the other day uh, with those tuning improvements and there was a fairly decent uh, crosswind blowing there so I had to sort of keep some rudder in. Um, but you can see it here it's performing pretty good. I had the, um, the prop set to flat pitch and it was just you know getting full power there compared to what I did on that first flight as I said before. And I just took it up to just over 80 knots and then just sort of pulled the power back to about 30% and sort of kept it there for a little bit also to be able to look in the logs and just see uh, how the cooling was when you're just sort of cruising there with a lower power to see if the temperatures were already coming down on the coolant via the radiator and also via the intercooler. So uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm not too worried about the power now. So next up let's do a comparison of this run and another couple of runs. Okay so top left corner that's uh, my first flight. And then on the right hand side, that's the Cirrus SR20, which was basically, um, its weight was 2,600 pounds and with 200 horsepower. And keep in mind, I'm 3,600 pounds, so 1,000 pounds more. And then below that, uh, I've got um, my aircraft from the run that I just did. And pay particular attention to the speed on the Cirrus. That's in miles per hour. So you've got to uh, divide that by 1.15 in order to get the knots. So for those of you who are not uh, familiar with that conversion, so it's going to show a similar value, but you've got to bring it down uh, quite a bit before it's going to match up with what the readings are for the other two uh, videos there. All right, so I've tried to sync up these videos as much as possible. And uh, on the Cirrus one in the top right corner, the thousand foot marker bars, they are very, very faded because the aircraft or the runway hadn't been repainted yet. But I basically stopped it so the video at the bottom, the one I did just recently, that's right as it hits the thousand foot mark. And as you'll see right about there. So the Cirrus is doing 65 miles per hour and uh, 61 knots on the bottom display there, that turns out to 70 miles per hour. And the first flight run showing there 59 knots, which is almost 68 miles per hour. So even quicker than the Cirrus, even on that first flight that I did. 
And as I said, the Cirrus was 2,600 pounds with 200 horsepower. The Raptor is 3,600 pounds, so you can figure it out, but the math works out to at least 315 horsepower, depending on how you do it. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of power in this aircraft for what I'm trying to do right now. And if we continue on to where the Cirrus uh, actually rotates and gets airborne, you'll see the Raptor top left is about 84 miles per hour and bottom center it's about 88 and a half miles per hour so definitely beating the Cirrus on performance there so as I said I'm not worried that there's um, not enough power in this aircraft obviously it has to uh, rotate later because it doesn't have as much lift because there's no flaps so I've addressed power I'm addressing cooling um, addressing the problem of the turbulence under the wing by covering those wheel wells up next I'll be removing f fuel from the tanks in order to have that as not a CG problem. So it won't be too long and I'll be able to do some more ground effect runs, but I'm only going to do it if I have a straight headwind or that's completely calm. I just don't want to risk it with a crosswind uh, now. And today I pretty much had uh, the worst day I've had in a while. First of all, my main laptop actually just died completely this morning when I started editing this video. And I was able to get the hard drive out of it and put it in an external case and hook it up to my Microsoft Surface Go and so that's how I'm editing this video which is really difficult on such a small screen with a low power um, laptop so I've got to try and sort out a new laptop and then when I was on my way back from Best Buy um, getting that external um, drive casing my uh, uh, engine in my car just decided to com completely quit so I had to get my car towed so now I have to figure out some different transportation so all this is just really adding to 2020 <laughs> so I'm not sure when I'll be back at the airport to do some testing I've got to get some wheels first anyway I'll leave you with the last little bit of this um, this little um, comparison video there and um, tune in and see what I have for you on the next one thanks again for watching cheers